In this episode, we're gonna get these trees out of the ground. So Ed, how long has these uh, trees been in the ground? About five years. And then how 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 big of the nabari or the or the trunk would be at this point after five years in the ground? Well, as you can see, all different sizes. This is just one of five rows that was here, and I have trees anywhere from three or four inches in diameter to hardly an inch, because I planted them so thick that. Only the ones that competed real good got big, and the rest are get shaded out a little. That's why I'm taking them all out right now. Um, is this planted in a grow box? Not grow box, but the the grow bags or no? They're just I dug a, a ditch, a trench, uh, twelve inches wide, and about four, five inches deep, and I put a strip of ground cover cloth down, and in the ground, and then I planted the trees on top of it and covered them over. So it's like a sandwich, basically. Uh. Well, it's just a barrier under the roots so that they won't go straight down. Got it. And uh, Easier to dig out later? Well, yeah, they come out a little easier. Uh, we'll see if we can come up with a piece and show you. So we basically, we just cut them down both sides and then cut in between. Uh, put a strap on them, pull them out of the ground. Sweet. All right. So <clears throat> you just... Now, if you had to do this all over again, what would you have done different? Uh, spaced them a little farther apart. So they have a little, little more, a little more room to grow. You know, a little more branching. But uh, you never assume that you're going to get clo even close to as many as you plant. I mean, you're always going to lose a lot of them. And these were saplings, I presume, quarter inch. They were uh, about this size. Okay. So Ed's doing this with a tractor. I presume he's going to pull it. Um, I highly should not suggest this with your car, but if you have a truck, we've seen home videos like this. Well, we're going to lift it. We're not gonna just drag it out. But what happens if you drag it out, Ed? <laughs> I don't know. Not interested in finding out particularly. Oh, there's a tow hitch on this uh, on the tractor front there. Look at that, that's kind of sweet. We're moving trailers around.
so of course if you miss that uh, it said uh, he does actually uh, the whole row at a time so he cuts them all out picks them all out with his tractor and then um, he goes back to repot it but just for uh, right now this is how we um, he goes from the in the ground um, into a pot within the first year so those trees have been in the ground for he said about five years um, significant growth um, so if he had to redo this again he would say he would um, change the uh, spacing between the trees so um, he's talking about the competition of for light and for space and for uh, resources basically those trees so the more resources you can give it uh, light watering um, sunlight the trees will go faster and you have a, a thicker trunk so that's what he's going for in this case um, so if you missed that now and during that interview session So I presume you do a whole row at a time, Ed, when you do this. on top of and so you didn't really go through it it, it kind of did yeah, but they, not oh they, I mean, they break off. off most of the time they come off pretty easy they break but uh and that's to stop the roots from going straight down is that correct and trying to get yeah, a nabari hard, hard for me to get under there and cut them and plus you know you always if it's going to go in a bonsai pot you're always looking to flat cut them anyway right yeah so we just use i just use this little hand pick from the roots that did go through it and then look underneath it's not that it's going to be several years before you really want to uh, put this in a bonsai pot so we're not looking to prune these roots suitable for bonsai we're just trying to get them in another container and then we'll eventually we'll ultimately we'll put them back in the field again in a container so there's not many fine roots per se at this point so are you trying to regrow fine roots uh, we're trying to get more roots more balanced roots but we're trying to work we're going to start working a little bit more on taper and healing some cuts and and they were shading themselves out in that row because they were too close together so rather than lose them i'm going to dig them and put it back i'm going to make it easier on myself put it back in a little bit better more user-friendly so growing situation. I'm taking all the limbs off. So for the first five years, it's really growing the trunk, correct? Now we're not really growing right. anything else. It's really growing that trunk line. You can line. see where we've cho we chopped it here. We chopped it here. We chopped it there. We chopped it there. So, you know, we've been trying to get some taper on it. Uh, some of them work with you and some of them fight you. <laughs> you know, there's just not much you can do a uh, plant does pretty much what it wants to do even even if you think you know what it should do it doesn't know it's like kids they do whatever they want to do anyway how long would it go from the ground growing into a um, a temporary container how long would that usually take depends a little bit on the size if you, if you take this one that one okay uh you know it's 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 quite a bit bigger and uh, we're going to chop it again right here Cause there's a there's a bud there and uh by the time this is halfway healed this will be healed but the trunk will be bigger so you just each one's going to take a little about a little bit of time the bigger they are the more time they take but anywhere from you would be ready to put it in a training pot maybe this one maybe in two years this one maybe five years okay so uh, really it, it so it really depends on each tree yeah and they don't all grow the same you know just because they're tried in maples doesn't mean they grow alike uh, some roots some I live I, in a kind of a clay soil uh, I see you're really gentle with your trees well bare root uh, deciduous trees you don't have to baby them they if, as long as you meet a few requirements they're going to survive you can cut the 
snot out of them and they're, they're okay with that what are you doing right now it looks like you're there uh... was a root that was going up and down again it it'll never be useful as a bonsai that way so i'm just gonna cut it out now oh so you're selecting for particular roots well some of them are really ugly or if we don't need them we'll get rid of them now so we're gonna cut roots have two functions one is to hold the tree up the other is to feed the tree so in a bonsai pot we don't need the structural roots the ones that hold the tree up we're going to tie it in a pot or the roots will get so tight it'll wedge itself in a pot so mm -hmm. we, we're always looking to take out the big ones uh, and leave the little ones and we need to cut them back so we can get them in a reasonable sized pot what are you going to do with that ladder root that goes straight across you're going to keep it or i'm going to take at that at some out? point i'll take a uh, there's a, a grinding wheel you can put on a four-inch grinder that has carbide, yeah, just hundreds of carbide tips. You just turn it over and just grind it grind off. Grind it off. You know, and it's uh, really a lot better than chipping away at it with a with a knob cutter. See, this is obviously material we're not going to want yeah. at some point but we're going to get all kinds of stuff up in here and and like i said you may grow 10 of these and two of them may be totally worthless you know what do you do with a useless one burn them <laughs> you know you don't even monkey with them you know because it just wastes your time so if i was a homeowner and i was growing on maybe about five of these and i have one ugly one do i keep it do i sell it sell it to somebody who's not your friend oh jeez. <laughs> Plant it in your yard for shade tree. Yeah, okay. You know, it'll 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 grow just fine. Uh, we'll make slanting cuts on the top of these big roots and uh, try to shorten them up an equal amount. Is this why bonsai people grow multiple trees at one time? It's because they know only ten percent is the you know the ones that really want. And the rest they're pretty much not the quality of the tree they're looking for. I, you know, you can't speak for other people. I, I grow a lot because I, I get a kick out of growing a lot. But uh, the more you grow, the better chance you have of com coming across a really nice one. You know what I mean? No. But some of these trees actually, without knowing it, will cooperate with you, and the rest of them are going to fight you a little. Uh, I've had guys to study in Japan tell me that the field grown bonsai there sometimes they'll grow 10,000 trees and only four or five of them will be number one trees and they'll sell some number ones and they'll sell a num bunch of number twos and they'll push the rest up and burn them. Wow because it's not worth the energy to keep because them the up. amount of money they get for a really good tree is enough to pay for the, the effort. The burn pile huh? Yep. Yeah. So this is unusual to have this big root here this is roots from other trees grafted together with the tree with this tree oh, huh. and uh, we'll grind that off all the roots will be right here this log this log will be ground off eventually and now all you got to do is find a pot to put it in one that suits you and uh, do you have a particular pot that you like to grow in no I, whatever I can whatever I can get that's economical uh, the in the other video we talked about not getting a pot Correct. with a hole in the bottom uh, like this pot it has a hole in the middle yeah those are no good so, well they're okay but you uh you have to you got to bend the push it way over and get under there to cut it this way you just cut where the holes are and you don't have to get on your nose and try to cut that off so i paid a little bit of money for these pots that don't have a hole in them on the bottom Any particular type of soil or anything you got? Anything's worth it for you? I buy, a, I, I did, uh, order a certain mix from a, a guy that mixes soils and does sells rocks and he does stuff like that. He's been mixing it for me for 30 years. And uh, I order a pile there. There's what's left of the last 10 yards behind you. 
And uh, just about everything that I grow, I grow in that soil. It works well for me and has worked for, well for me for 30 years, so there's no reason to change. We're and not it's, trying to... Uh, and it's not, it's not Akadama, it's, not, it's, it's just regular, it looks like... forest humus and sand. Yeah. And uh, I, you have to add some uh, calcium because uh, the forest humus is fairly acid. And uh, as it breaks down, it gets more so. So if you don't treat it with a little bit of gypsum and, and some other and dolomite and stuff like that, pretty soon your uh, tree is growing in uh, soil with a pH of lemon juice. But they don't grow too well. So you've got to put some slow release calcium in there to help. What did you just do? You did something really important. Some people oh, have well, might have missed well, there that. Were two, there were two branches here, only one. Why? Well, I ho I'm hoping this bud here comes out so it goes back this other direction. Okay. And uh, when you get too many branches in one place, you're going to lose taper. So that, that's why you went back to that. It's, that's, it's really to, to get um, your taper movement. Yeah. And uh, I, should, I should cut this right here. I think I'll do it right now. This is uh, a flat cut. We, when you, you always want to cut, it's best, it's great if you can cut at an angle to, to an existing shoot like this. I should have done it. But when you, are, when, you, when you cut this off, if I cut it at an angle, chances are just as good that this bud on the low side is going to come out and uh, you'll lose this piece of trunk that you want. So if I cut it straight across, I'll get, there's a two. There's two uh, old uh, bud primary buds here, and uh, if only one comes out, or this one comes out, or something, I have something to pick from. If I cut this one off, and this one down here comes out, then I then I lose. Because it'll die. It'll die here. back that far. Yeah. So I'm gonna bury this a little bit in this soil here and try to cut this off. store and take a piece of branch like like this one and I tell give me some exterior latex paint color match the bark oh wow so then I take a paintbrush and I paint these big wounds and they'll seal that long enough for the plant to do its job and not keep losing water out of it and it's cheap and you're just basically you're just sealing basically sealing the, the wound basically with the paint trying to get it not to pull back too far you know so and you know, nobody can not to, if you have several hundred trees you can't afford imported japanese cut sealer and uh the black stuff that you get for your orchard that stuff hangs around forever tar based product and it's it's noticeable for a long time but, uh, and then i'll wash this dirt in with a hose and get, push the hose down in there and make sure it's washed in tight around all the roots and that's all there is to it then I'll, I'll set it under the shade for one season and it'll be rooted in by then i'll cut it loose then i'll take it out in the same pot and set it in the field and it'll be on the ground correct like last time it'll be yeah, on, the on the ground, ground yeah. and then um once it gets to a point you'll put it back in the ground probably or no it should i should be able to make a tree out of it wow really you know uh the pot the roots will be the pot will be so full of roots that you won't be able and they'll be they'll split these holes open and you won't be able to get it out of the pot so i just turn it over on the side and take the saws all and just cut it in half and that'll be your new root ball and start then work on the roots again all right so five years in the ground, probably another two years, a year and a half maybe before. For a smaller tree, yeah. yeah. For a bigger tree, I we're 
gonna we'll show you some in a minute that it'll take another seven or eight years to heal, heal, heal the wounds week. heal the wounds in well they get some taper they don't have any real taper right now okay so we'll, we'll go in the greenhouse okay. and look at some i've got a full bag so how I'm much would a tree like this cost if someone came by and bought it from you ed it's, they're not for sale right now but if they if it was for sale i don't know i've never sold any in this stage uh how about the other stages you have on in the, in the, on the premise right now? I've got trees, charging maples from $100 to $1,200. Okay, so? Yeah, so you saw some of the bigger ones the other day. Uh, I'll show you some that we just took out of the front because we had to. We need to use that space for something else. So I'm going to work them over here on the next rainy day, and we'll put them back in the field in a container. And and continue to grow them for taper but when they by the time they get ready for sale they'll there'll be trunks about that big. oh wow so we'll go in the greenhouse in a minute and look at those i'm going to water this right now what's the what's the great time to do this by the way i, I know um time it de depends on your location but here in lindsay california which is you can uh, work on deciduous stock like like i'm doing right now anytime from the time the leaves fall until the time they bud out again. So we got a good range. You had a good range yeah, of time. We got 90 days, yeah. 70 days. But uh, if you're just doing a, a minor root pruning and like a bonsai pruning, it's best to wait until the buds are about to push. It is entirely possible to uh, do pruning work on a bonsai uh, and have it bleed to death on you. Uh, if you don't do some root pruning too. So that's a little bit different thing when you're bare rooting them in the field like I'm doing. I'm cutting a lot of roots off to start with so they won't push a lot of skinny sap. You didn't see the, the, these aren't leaking. They've been cut off like that for 10 days. Because I, I just skinned the hide off of this. It doesn't matter. It's all gonna go in the trash anyway. It's not weeping. Because uh, the you, roots you, you, cut, you cut the, the, cut, the uh, cut the source. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little water on this, and then we'll go and show you some really big ones. The cycle is about is whatever you're willing to endure. What's the longest you've gone for? We'll show you one in a little bit. It's uh, well, we, I, we can show you a couple. Of ones 12 years old. I got three or four over there that are 12 years old. I've got one that I'm working on for myself that's 15 years. So we just, I just make sure this, this soil gets washed in well around the roots. And if the soil doesn't cover the roots after it, it settles back down, I put a little more soil in it. Ah. And then set it on, on, a, on a water system. Oh, easy peasy, man. Especially when you have a couple hundred of them, like I said. But you can pay a lot more attention to one than you can to a hundred, right? True, but uh, you don't get the chance to select the one you really want. What's that? You don't get to select the one you really want. You have you have a choice of five trees. Yeah. Ooh, nice cold uh, December day. At least it's not raining, right, Ed? Yeah, it's not cold. We're now in the greenhouse. Greenhouse is a good, wow, wow. It's a nice warm toasty in here. So these are, these tridents are, t are 10 years old right now. Oh, wow. And uh, they've got another seven, six, seven years before they are serious pre bonsai. These are like giant soup can thickness we're talking about. Like, this guy's like, yeah, check this one out. Check this one out. Look at that. How many years? This is 12 years. Ten, these are 10 years old. Oh, wow. And there's there's a couple of them in here that are less than that, but the bigger ones are 10 years old. And uh, now we'll go see uh, one that looked like this five years ago. Five years ago. So we're talking about 12 years. 15 years in the ground? You know, 15 years since it was sprouted from a seed. I don't... I Somewhere in the neighborhood 15 years. I don't... I don't keep a birth certificate on all of them. I'll be impressed at if you did have a birth certificate on each one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be impressive. Yeah, 
This tree is just now in the pre bonsai stage. It was flat cut right here about six years ago, five or six years ago. And uh, you can see the progression of the chops. First it was flat cut off, then it grew a pretty big, this is about half healed. And, it, and then it was cut again. And then this section grew and then it was cut again. And then this section grew and it was cut on this side. And then we'll cut it right here this year. And then we'll cut the, the majority of the, all these big branches will be cut real, real, real short. And then when they come out, again, we'll train them down. And uh, that's kind of, can be kind of hard to do. One trick is this, take a drill bit the size of the, the wire you want, and you can drill a hole either under or above each limb. And then the, the new shoots will be small. You just wire them out horizontal. And then you just pull the wire out and in a few weeks it'll heal the whole heels over so you don't have to wrap them around the trunk or go to some other branch and bring them across to the next branch just drill a hole that wouldn't harm the trunk at all yeah you know it's like driving a nail in it won't, no. won't hurt it and i presume the i'm looking at the front i presume then i don't know which the front is yet but we'll see all right and that's about 15, 12 to 15 years, probably, approximately yeah, from the ground. Something like that, yeah. How about this other one? Are this, we... this one was uh, a tree, I, it's a grafted trident. Uh, it's called Naruto Kati, and it has especially small uh, inner nodes. I'll show you a, one that's almost finished bonsai. And uh, it, <clears throat> I grafted it and planted it in the yard, and it ended up in the wrong place. Was this supposed to be an, a bonsai at one point? It was supposed to be a yard no, tree. No, it was supposed to be a yard tree. <laughs> I pushed it out with a with a bucket on the tractor, and I let it sit there for a couple of weeks. And I said, well, you yeah, know, maybe I could do something with that. But it was, you know, it was this big around, up three feet. So I just took a chainsaw and carved it out in the middle and did some work on it and set it off in the back. See, well, maybe it'll make something, maybe it won't. You know, but if it, it looks like it might actually it's interesting. come along to something. We go digging for stuff. We're always looking for something beat up. And, <laughs> you know, it's seen uh, hard times. And that, that tree's seen some hard times. And this is what the foliage looks like if you want to look at this particular type of tree. This is a, this is that same tree, uh, the Naruto Kati uh tried it maple and it has really it gets really really fine uh inner nodes and it's uh, a lot of people don't like the foliage uh it curls over on the edges and the back side is kind of a gray green so to some people it looks dry but there's the foliage you can see how it rolls over oh no they don't like that but if you if you have a winter silhouette show like bike in does you know this is a, this is perfect because it has, shows real fine ramification and you don't have to look at the leaves that time of year. So why did you use trident maples um, for this type of technique? Can you use it for other type of trees or just because... I don't know if you could... If, if, there, I'm sure there's other deciduous trees you can slam that hard, but tridents are just so tough and they grow so hard and they heal, cuts so easy. You can just... It's a it's a it's a perfect type of tree for yeah, this type of technique. It's like putting it on uh, putting a tree on a rock. A trident is particularly grows. It's just adaptable to its circumstances, and it it'll cling to a rock and it'll weld itself right to that rock. And whereas a Japanese maple won't do won't do that. Oh. Uh, a trident maple will flatten itself to the rock like this one. They'll all do that. They just grasp the rock and they look. Like they've always been there. Uh, so there's there's a particular advantage of using this technique with tridents. Yeah, I, like, I like tridents. Uh, this is here's a, this, You can see how this one has adapted itself to the rock. There's where it grabbed a hold, and these are 27 years old, and that they just they do they like to grab that rock, and they they flatten out so they look like it wasn't man-made necessarily. Try, uh, Japanese maples don't do that well. Interesting. Well, thank you, Ed, for this uh, very informational uh, 
tour of how to uh, go from a uh, ground to a uh, tree basically uh, hope you guys if you need more information about ed's nursery it'll be in the description i think ed we welcome anybody to come by just give him a call and uh, any other anything else ed i forgot <laughs> I forgot a lot. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know, uh, I just love bonsai, I, and I love growing. This is a perfect hobby for an old guy. Well, again, if you want to come by, it's a great time to come by during the winter time to see the winter silhouette while you're here. Uh, again, if you like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you again. Thanks, Ed, for everything. Thanks, Tom.